welcome to Conversations with Healers, a podcast and video interview series that features intimate, soulful, and cozy conversations with self-healers and healers. Healer to Healer, we dive into all aspects of self-healing and healing and being and becoming a healer. I am Damla Aktekin. I am a healer and the host of this podcast, and I can't wait for you to listen to this conversation. If you are new to this podcast, please take a moment to subscribe so that you can be aware of new episodes. I also invite you to visit a dropofom.com, a d r o p o f o m.com, where I share a lot of free resources for self-healing and healing, and you can take a free quiz to find out what your energetic wounds are and how they may show up in your life. Discovering what your wounds are is the first step in healing them. I hope you enjoy this episode. There is one more thing I would like to share with you before you listen to this episode. I created a wonderful container to help you heal your energetic wounds and activate the infinite light and potential of your inner children. It is a crystal energy healing membership called Chakra Bliss Vault. Every month you will receive three new crystal healing sessions Plus, you'll immediately have access to my entire energy healing recording library when you sign up. The membership is really affordable and will continue to be so. You can find out more about it at adropofom.com, A-D-R-O-P-O-F-O-M.com. I invite you to make healing your energetic wounds and connecting with your inner children a priority and invest in your well-being by becoming a Chakra Bliss Vault member. Hello everyone, this is Damla Aktikin and I'm so excited to have my guest Mark Borax here today. Hello Mark. Hi Damla. <laughs> and Mark is a uh, an astrologer, a uh, creator of the soul level astrology that I'm studying and creator and captain of what he calls the College of Visionaries and Wizards, which is the three-year astrology program that I have the privilege to be in. He is also a poet, writer, I want to say a psychic, and the author of the Amazon bestseller, The Ruby Heart of the Dragon, Sun Signs for Our Times. So welcome, Mark. Thanks, Dan. It's great to have some time to speak with you. Yes, yes. And I want to dive right in. And my first question is, um, I'm sure you've been doing this in the in the past few weeks and months, talking to people on interviews, but I want to know what wants to be known right now about your journey of coming here to this moment doing what you do and and to this book what wants to be known right now about you wow well that's a broad and deep question <laughs> which uh would probably take the whole rest of our time together for me to answer but let me see if i can sum up a good response to that what's led me to this current moment um, has been my whole life because since I was very young, I saw myself as a writer, uh, as a successful author of books. And though I've had a couple of books published in the last 15 years, um, this one feels uh, up to be a culmination, to be an apex, because I put everything that I had into that book as a writer, as a poet, and as an astrologer. It it really kicked my ass. It pushed me because in order to write about the Zodiac the way that I needed to is like a jazz musician um, having to improvise in the living moment and open himself to what wants to come through based on all the other earlier work um, 
that the mu musician does playing scales and performances and getting to the inside of songs. So for me, the Zodiac is like music. And to do justice to the book, uh, I wrote seven days a week for four years and three months. And I feel like I succeeded. I, I did put all my art and all my magic into uh, an attempt to use the Zodiac to awaken people's deeper soul nature. And there's the short answer to your question. Yes, <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> we, we might go in a little deeper as, as we talk. Um, I want to start with sort of for anyone listening who doesn't quite know what soul level astrology is or even what astrology is one of the first things you you say in the book is you say the zodiac is a creation story that proposes 12 variations on the theme of being human 12 quests for individuation 12 life arts 12 invitations to um awaken so what's that about 12 life arts <laughs> well you know astrology is a story when you break it down to its square root it's a story and stories have immense power stories can destroy the world stories can save the world stories can change lives stories do change lives it's the stories that we all tell ourselves constantly all the time without even really knowing that they're stories that play out how we see ourselves how we see others how we see the world and so since i was having an opportunity to bring a new story to the world or new version of an old story this particular story of the zodiac has 12 chapters or 12 protagonists 12 beings and uh, in order to really get down in and dismantle the cliches to throw out the the shallow thinking and get to something deeper uh, I really had my work cut out for me it, it was like um, communing telepathically with 12 different living beings who each had a whole different story to tell me and I needed to make myself very quiet inside uh, at my computer keyboard uh, in order to listen. Yes, I would love for you to, if 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 it's okay with you, tell us um, how do they get lost? How do these signs get lost and how do they find their way back to love again? You came here your soul reincarnated in order to release the immense creativity packed into you the deep love force that wants to be expressed in this world and when astrology is used on a soul level it takes the stance that some deep inner part of you knows exactly why you're here where you've come from how to fully blossom and and uh, release the the massive creative force and love inside you but you have to want to you have to believe that and so in the book i broke it down to 12 different variations of how to do that mm. so when we get lost Another one of the things you talk about in the book is um, karma as an invitation and as an opportunity to awaken. Um, I think that um, most people, when they think about astrology, they don't think about it as sort of this guideline or perhaps... Um, a chance to re remake your story to redefine your relationship to karma um how can astrology help us do that how can astrology help us see karma a little differently and to 
to awaken in, to the opportunity that's in it. Yeah, I go into this a lot um, here and there throughout the book, but most especially in the Capricorn chapter, I really go into this, which is what is karma? Um, because I feel that most people misunderstand karma. M most people think that karma is either payback for past wrongs or reward for past rights, but I don't think that's its main purpose. I think that the main purpose of karma is to summon you to awaken in the places you've been asleep or that you've been half awake, to, to invite you to gain presence in the places where you've been absent. And, and uh, the gift of astrology is it breaks down human nature to 12 different tarot cards, 12 different archetypes. And, um, and, and in the doing of that, if, and this is what I tried to do in the book, I tried to go into the ways each sign gets stuck and the ways they get free, the ways, as you said, that they get lost and the ways that they awaken. And uh, to do that, I had to, um, I had to really go deep inside myself and dismantle my own cliches and lazy thinking about the signs. The karmic part of that is that when, um, when a person awakens on a deep core level, level of the soul, which is my only interest in astrology is, is getting to the soul, then the dysfunctional patterns that repeat uh, throughout your life, instead of becoming punishment, become deep invitations to bring the depth of who you are into each living moment. And when you recognize that the return of the old pattern is your only chance to awaken and get beyond it, rather than a punishment, uh, all of a sudden, the shift begins occurring deep inside you because you're already um, you're, you're already uh, dismantling the machinery of self-negation. You're 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 awakening to something um, something right happening beneath something that might have felt so wrong. Mm. Something right happening beneath that might have felt like being so wrong. It's like um, almost like an invitation to dive into it differently than you have been to dive into it with with more of a um an opportunity for an opening rather than a punishment as you were saying yeah um, yeah absolutely yeah which brings me to the ruby heart of the dragon <laughs> why ruby why heart what does the dragon have to do with astrology, Mark? And what are we talking about when we say notes? Can you give us a little summary of what that's about? Yeah, when I was first um, envisioning the book, uh, I was just writing about the signs. And then I realized that while I was writing about each of the 12 sun signs, I had an opportunity to put another spin on it, which I'd never seen anyone do in any other book about the 12 sun signs, which was add in uh, something that astrologers call the north and south nodes of the moon. And, um, and the Arabian astrologers had colorful names for the north and south nodes of the moon. What, what the north and south nodes are is they mark the path where the moon's orbit crosses the path of the sun, which is a karmic um, a karmic axis so that your south node indicates where you've been in past lives and where you've been in the past in this life and the opposite point the north node indicates the destiny that your soul is trying to get to and one of the main reasons you reincarnated and the arabian astrologers called the south node the tail of the dragon the place that you're coming from and they a uh, tail T A I L the the part of the dragon's anatomy that's the tail, and they called the north node the place you're trying to get to the dragon's head, and when I thought about that I thought, well if I write uh, a chapter 
about each of the 12 signs, then at the end of that chapter, I can add a page that has to do with if that sign appeared on your dragon's axis. In other words, if I'm writing about Aries, someone who's reading my book would have an Aries south node or maybe an Aries north node. And I can add a little bit as to now that I've described Aries, here's what it's like if you have Aries as the head or tail of your dragon. Here's what it's like if you have Taurus as the head or tail of your dragon. And as the writing progressed during the first year, I thought, well, that could lend a really powerful feeling to the book because I'm writing about the dragon. I'm writing about your son. And when I thought of a person's sun sign, which is basically the sign of the zodiac that the sun appeared to be moving through at the moment of your birth. And when I thought of that, I imagined that it was positioned somewhere in between the tail of the dragon and the head of the dragon. And when I thought, so where would that sun be? And I thought, oh, it's going to be somewhere around the heart of the dragon. If it was in an anatomy between the tail and the head is the heart. And I thought, oh, I could conceive of a person's sun sign as the heart of the dragon that when they deal with the issues of the past, when they awaken out of their own um, illusion, out of their own dysfunction, when they turn around their karma, when they awaken, their ruby heart can shine. And then later in the process of the early writing of the book, I thought about what happens if a ruby heart shines when you get a laser beam because rubies make lasers. And I thought, oh, that's like dealing with your karma at the tail of the dragon ignites your sun sign or igniting your sun sign helps you deal with your karma at the tail. Then it shines a light toward the head, toward your destiny. So, um, so that's where I got the ruby heart of the dragon. And it had a nice kind of mythological feeling to it. It felt like the old tales and legends. And so I wanted to find a way to talk about modern life and modern people in a way that also had grandeur and a mythopoetic um, resonance to it. You certainly have, I have to say, <laughs> having read the book cover to cover. And I think for me, one of the revelations in it, Mark, was... um after each sign you go into the directional um explanations of what if aries was the tail what if aries was the head and what would that um directional almost like actional movement would feel like and that takes the sun sign from being just static to okay let's put it into action let's put it into the drama of life the theater and this is how they would act in with the opposite sign and that to me it adds to the sign it gives you the sign in action um which i loved which brings me to um how i met you <laughs> which was about i want to say four or five years ago i actually i wasn't studying astrology back then and i i heard you speak at an online conference and I decided to get a reading from you. Um, and it was a two hour reading of, uh, at the beginning you asked me, you said, do you want me to tell you about the astrology or do you want me to just tell you what I what I, what it all means? And I said, just what it all means. And I was basically um, crying or more like weeping for two hours. And you said I was very quiet because it was such an experience of you seeing me on a, like the deepest level. Um, you telling me of the things I've known, but haven't been able to put into words. Um, and that's been the other layer of experience with your book for me. Um, and I have to say, it didn't hit until, like, I was just leisurely reading it, Mark, until I came to the chapter of Leo. And in Leo, I was like, yes, what, 
<laughs> waterworks. I was underlining every single thing. Um, before I dive into that, I want to talk about the Leo chapter for sure. But I think one of the gifts of the book for me was, um, or is, it's almost like this next best, best thing to having you look at someone's birth chart and really see them. And you always talk about like the birth chart, almost like a quantum map. It's not static. It's full of potentials. And every time you look, you can see something else. And I can see the artistic struggle of that as you were writing this book. But I'm so glad you did it because... Again, for me, it's what you do in the readings is like you see the people as they are, as their like deepest full potential is, as their soul. And this book has the potential of doing that for people if they approach it with the with the right intention. Um, does anything come up in you as, as yeah. like ladies? Yeah, I'm so glad you see it that way. Thank you. Thank you for that reflection, because that is one of the main things I tried to do. I, I, I tried to give a reading to my readers and and it might come through their sun sign, but we we each have all the 12 signs in us in some unique blend. And so it really hit you first in your opposite sign because you're an Aquarius. And when you were at Leo, that's where the deeper um, meaning or the deeper initiation of the book seemed to really grab you. And so it's, it might not be necessarily in the person's sun sign where I'm really giving them that deeper reading, but it could happen anywhere. And I, I really wanted to do that. I wanted to give the world a reading uh, after 40 years of doing readings uh, as a profession. Uh, it's, it's my livelihood. I wanted to use the same uh, state of consciousness the same depth and, and and what was really hard, the same personal connection. And it, that was really hard because normally I'm sitting with the person either via Zoom or in person when I'm giving them a reading. But now I had to aim my words through the pages of the book into these imaginary readers. One way I did that was by uh, having Zoom meetings with a single friend of mine who had who had uh, their sun sign in that chapter. So so I, I had a Scorpio friend and I read the work in progress, the Scorpio chapter to her, and I could kind of feel what was working and what wasn't. And sometimes we talked about it. So with each of the chapters, um, uh, after I had been writing it for a couple of years, I tried it out on people. Um, but while I was writing each chapter, I had a post-it note with the list of the names of the people I knew best of that sign, my friends, my, my ex-lovers, uh, people in my life. So I would have a little post-it note with five or 10 or 20 names, and I would be writing that chapter and I would say, oh, okay, well, this part of Aquarius, it seems like Wendy, but maybe it doesn't seem like Domla. Let me, let me see if I can adjust this. And so I was, I was doing a reading kind of in the writing of it. I was using all my tricks as a, as an artist um, to, 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 to get the person to a reading, to make them feel like I was talking to them. So, so the fact that it worked on you makes me, makes me feel really uh, happy. I was weeping all throughout the Leo chapter, Mark. So yes, it did, <laughs> it did work on me. Um, I love what you're saying. And at the same time, it's the, the quantumness of the chart, I think comes into play because I can already see like the next time I read that same chapter or the next time I read the book, I'm going to pick up something else. So in that sense, there's almost like the, the aliveness of the reading present in the book. And you say it so beautifully when you've, the last thing you say in the book, if I can read that, you say, everything is so much more than we'll ever realize. And the true story of what you're really made of could never fit into one small book or be contained in that little human body. 
I mean, that's, wow, that's the essence of it, which is um, this book being the gift that it is, is a mirror for you to see yourself. And at the same time, there's so much more. There's yeah. so much more. Yeah. And that's, um, as you know, having been my student for the last year, there's always going to be a mystery. And um, and and one of the reasons I wrote the book was I was um, I was pushing off against the part of astrologers and astrology and astrology books that typecasts each of the twelve signs in a in a little box. Um, oh, she's a Gemini, so you know she's fickle and she's undependable. And 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 when astrology is used that way, uh, it becomes a prison. Um, I was trying to use it the opposite way, uh, not as if I had the last word on the zodiac, but that I was almost that I was having the first word. That I'm I'm opening a door so that in each of the signs, um, I I left enough mystery, which is what I finally mentioned at the end of the book that you just quoted, that I could never know all of who you are. How could how could anyone? know all of who you are. It's like knowing all of William Shakespeare. It's like knowing all of King Lear or Hamlet or love. Um, but nevertheless, I can excavate deep parts of you that might stimulate your growth, your knowing, your awakening. And, and by passing on the things that I've learned uh, from 40 years of working astrology, but also leaving a healthy bit of mystery uh, like jazz, um, then the astrology can become more freeing than entrapping. Yes. Yeah. Which takes me to, I just want to go back to Leo, which I think is the chapter that talks probably the most about what we were talking about at the beginning, the life art part. And you say, Leo is the summons to be so true to yourself, you take the leap that turns living into art. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's so simple. It is so just be yourself. It's so simple. But why is it so difficult at the same time? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And that's the paradox, um, especially the paradox of selfhood, which is Leo's domain. It's that the you that you really are is always there inside you. But sometimes it's down deep at such a core part of you that you might have gotten talked out of it in childhood. You know, there might have been a time in childhood when the core part of you was just ravishing, just so alive. And and at a certain point, that might have gotten suppressed because you got conditioned as to how to fit in with society, how to fit with your parents or or your religion or your teachers. And then you might have gotten steered out of the life of the soul into living a life of compromise a life of getting by, a life of making money or looking good or gaining a lot of social followers. And, and there's nothing wrong with gaining social followers or making money or looking good if it comes from your genuineness rather than your artificiality. And so many millions of people have gotten trapped in artificial existence that when you talk about selfhood when you talk about leo the lion inside it it's truly an art that you have to devote yourself to to simply being yourself because we're living at a time of great uh, masquerade great disguises um, tremendous fear uh, and so there's so much suppression going on now uh, as compared to the 1960s when there was uh, so much liberation so much release I was a teenager in the 1960s, and I really caught on to that uh, outburst of love and creativity. 
So I approached each of the 12 signs as an art. In fact, the chapter headings of all the signs are the art of. And, um, and so with Leo, it's the art of life itself. Just when you realize that being who you are is as much of an art as painting or sculpture or dance or music, then there's no right way to do it. There's no wrong way to do it. There's no right way to do art. There's no right way to paint a picture. But there are deeper ways and shallower ways. There are more um, powerful, uh, astonishing ways to do art. And then there's ho-hum, um, superficial ways. And it's the same with your life art. Each person is an art. Your life is an art. And by addressing that in each of the chapters of the book, I took that Leo uh, energy and I tried doing it to each of the signs. What's the true art of being Aquarius? What's, what's it like to be true to yourself and to come alive? So that was where in Leo, I just addressed the thing naked and bald and direct itself. Being you living is an art, but you've got to leap into it or else you're going to tiptoe around it and you you might die without ever fully awakening. Yes. And as you address in each chapter, like so many places to get lost also, I feel like there's that um, in what you created and this world of nodes and heads and tails, there's almost like this, um, it's almost like a yoga pose. There's the push and pull and, and in different degrees. And sometimes you get pulled towards the past and the karma to the tail a little bit more and at certain times a little bit less. So it's almost like a negotiation at every point. Um, and I feel like what astrology does is to say, say to you, like, don't get disheartened by the constant push and pull there's always more than what you see there are always more resources in you in in the um way of these 12 hours that exist in you in different amounts and in like infinite combinations um so which that brings me to uh which where that brings me to is so there's life art and then there's chart art which you also teach, which I'm so, so glad to be one of your students. And the very first thing you told us in the very first class was um, each time you look at the chart, don't assume anything and be open to everything. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. We need at this time on earth we need a lot of uh spirit and soul to counter the forces of uh oppression forces of fascism um it's a it's a war in the world now uh between uh soul and um and delusion and each person has an opportunity to use their life to awaken or to use their life to fit into the machine, into the world machine, the war machine. And, and so I, both in the book and in my private readings and in the course that I teach, it's the same message, which is, can we reach through the artificiality? Can we snap awake to the idea that you are a miracle that life is a is a treasure it might not look that way all the time these days it might not feel that way and, and if you're to believe the the media for the most part uh, it's not that at all it's 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 a time where you should be very afraid and not speak to strangers and hide your love and uh and yet deeper than those messages and all of that programming, I use astrology to reach through the old stories 
the stories of division, stories of fear, and to awaken the soul, uh, to awaken the person inside uh, who who is um, sick of the lies and the illusion and hungry for something real, hungry for love. We're all we're all hungry for love. We're hungry for unity. Uh, the human species is is on the verge of um, powerful transformations. Uh, and at the same time, the world is in a state of chaos. So I'm always using my teaching, my readings, and, and my book to, to, to reach through the appearance and to, to awaken the soul. One of the... Um, one of the intentions I found myself uh, setting for myself while I was writing the book was if there was a reader out there on the verge of suicide, that when they read their chapter of my book, maybe they wouldn't. Hmm. Yes, this ties beautifully to, I think, what your book offering is about, as well as your your um, chart reading and chart teaching, because one of the things you talk about in class is um, it actually doesn't, I mean, it matters, but not to the extent that it, um, the technical side of it is not as important as the part where you channel love in a reading, which I see your book do. Can you talk a little bit about that? How a birth chart reading is, is about love? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a funny kind of astrologer because um, a lot of people associate astrology with head knowledge, like heavy academic, patriarchal, professorial, like I am the big authority and it's gonna say <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And, uh, and, and for me, I can't read a chart without falling in love with it. I, I have to fall in love with the person <laughs> in order to read their chart. And, um, and so it is not detached. Um, it's, if anything, uh, my readings are more like an acid trip than a, uh, a college academic course. And so um, for me, the love part of this is that um, no matter how enlightened a human being gets, they're never going to find a truth beyond the truth of love. That it, you're not going to feed your brain. You're not going to go to the Himalayas and study with the gurus and meditate in a cave for 80 years and then come out and say, aha, I understand it. It's not about love at all. That's that's not going to happen. The only possible reason humanity could ever have for being here is reasons of love. Now, deep down inside, underneath all the counter-programming, I think everyone knows this. It's just the hard part is what to do with that knowing. And so I'm using astrology creatively, mischievously, cleverly i'll do anything i can to seduce a person into releasing their love and so when i look at the birth chart the chart itself is much less important to me than it is to most astrologers i'm not going to forever talk about venus in leo queen conx uh, mars and capricorn i i the whole purpose of the chart for me is a scope to get to the soul. And when you get to the soul, you're getting to some form of love. It was the love that your soul had for existence that brought it back from the dead into the living in this body at this time. And if you're here now, as all of your viewers are, if you're here now, it's because you needed to be. We need your love. We need your soul. We need you to awaken and to break out of, of the delusion 
that anything is more important than love. But to do that, to live the love is the work of a whole lifetime. So even though I awakened to the idea um, decades ago that it's all about love, um, I've been put, my feet have been put in the fire to try to live that truth, to do justice to it, to honor it, to, to live it with my wife, with my children, with my family, with my students, with the world. Um, it's, it's not an easy feat, but it does answer the uh, question that many millions of people have, which is, why am I here? Why am I even here? Yeah. Yes. And for me, as your student and as a, I would say, like a budding astrologer <laughs> compared to you, to hear that um, the readings are about love was like, oh, I can do that. I can do that. Like, don't ask me about everything there is to know about astrology. I'm learning. I'm open to it. But I'm not, you know, it's probably one lifetime isn't enough to know everything. But channeling love, holding a space for love um, and to know that that's enough. So they so those two things have been huge for me as as, a, as an astrology student of yours. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. For acknowledging it yes and the other thing you told us that was the second thing you told us in the very first class is you said you're gonna do this your way you said each and every one of you is gonna be doing astrology as you because we're not mark like i'm damla there's you know other people so everyone's art is going to be as unique as their life art the chart art is going to resemble um what is what is teaching about for you I know like we talked about love and everything but um what does it give you per se when you teach that's a good question what we're mostly talking about now is the three-year chart study program where I teach you and a group of others around the world each week we meet on zoom and I teach um, how to live by the soul. And so astrology is kind of the excuse for that. Some of my students have become professional astrologers, but, but most of them haven't. So what I'm doing is I'm using astrology, well, like a jazz teacher might use music. It, it's, it's not about the music it's about what you bring to the music it's not about the astrology it's about what you bring to the astrology and so for me um teaching has evolved because for years i tried to teach this soul level astrology soul level astrology is something i came up with in 1987 when i first became a practicing professional astrologer I was a young man in my early 30s out in the San Francisco Bay, and I needed a way to distinguish my astrology because there were many other astrologers in the San Francisco area. And I thought, well, what do might I have that's different? What would cause anyone to come to me? I'm this just young guy starting out here. And I thought, well, if I'm going to be offering new stories to people, they should be stories of the soul, not just stories of the mind not just stories of history and culture, but stories of the soul. And, and so teaching, for a long time, I, I offered classes in soul-level astrology um, for many years. I started teaching in the 80s. I taught in the 80s and the 90s and in the 2000s. But um, it wasn't until 2008 that my wife and I launched the College of Visionaries and Wizards chart study program, just now a three-year program. It used to be that my readings held the main juice and passion in my life, and my teaching was this side thing, was this little thing on the side. 
But gradually over the years, my teaching grew and grew and grew until the ratio has reversed. And now it's my teaching that has become the most satisfying part of my life. And um, and so in my teaching, I have worked out enough of the structures, uh, the class syllabi, how to do this in six semesters, in three years, how to teach someone how to live from the soul. In order to teach you how to do astrology of the soul, I have to teach you how to live from the soul. But it's never worked as good as it has now. Somehow each of the other groups that we graduated, because it's a certification program, each of the other students that we certified helped us refine the program um, till now. And I think uh, the world need right now is for people to, to deeply awaken, uh, to become the love they are, to practice their life art. And so I think world need externally and my own development as a teacher over the decades has come together to the point where my teaching right now is um, more satisfying than it, than it's ever been. I just, I just love teaching you guys. It's just, uh, it gives me a chance to flourish and come alive. Uh, I've worked enough of the kinks of the system out that uh, my teaching now is is much more like my music, my performing. I'm a singer, songwriter. Um, there's very little difference at all anymore between my music and my astrology and, and my life. So um, it's really become a, a, a deeply satisfying challenging and rewarding um in ways beyond where it ever was before yes and as a student i can speak to that it definitely feels like um first of all it does feel a lot like a school of incarnation yes we talk about astrology but there's definitely a lot of life art involved in the chart art and secondly and most importantly it's just it's very inspiring to see you um, like you show up fully and you're definitely channeling something. I don't know if it's music, the jet, whatever it is. When you start the class, you start to channel. And I think we go into this like almost like medicine journey with, with you, which can be intense sometimes, but very rewarding because um, for me, it's been the medicine of living in these times and yes I need to still go to the grocery store I need to take care of the needs of my cat my child my relationships whatever but I do need to come back to the bigger meaning of it all and those classes have been that for me of just coming back to the soul of it so thank you for that you're welcome yeah, yeah. it's like a medicine journey this this group especially um it, it really has transformative power beyond um, just the ideas that I'm offering. Yeah. I want to ask you, so we talked about your readings, your teaching. How does writing fit into this now that you've sort of pushed this big baby out into the world? How does writing fit into your life now? Well, yeah, that was a big big birth um you know like like maybe a whale is pregnant for two years or a, a, like elephant I, this was like a dinosaur because I uh, the writing itself as I said was four years and three months seven days a week um but really it was my whole life that prepared me and equipped me to be able to write this book uh I, I put everything that I had into it and um, now there's been a huge relief, a huge release. I think similar to a woman who's had a long pregnancy and then delivered a successful delivery. So it's out there. My book is out there in the world as an audiobook, as an ebook, and as a print book. It's out there, and it's moving through the world. And uh, and I just love hearing from readers. Um, and so. Now uh, I'm giving myself a break from the writing um, and just letting it, uh, letting everything I've gone through over those years of writing just settle 
sift and settle. Um, so I'm not working on any new book at this time. Um, here and there, I, I'm still dabbling with songwriting. Um, and I also write my monthly cosmic weather report. So, you know, my writing stays alive through various methods. I, I'm not sure what the next main project of my writing is going to be, um, but it, it, it feels, I feel deeply satisfied that I got this book out. And, um, you know, it gave me an excuse um, to write about the things I love, um, to, to reach down into the collective soul of my potential readership and say, hey, come on, there's a fire burning at the heart of reality. Come, come to the fire. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to say that um, for me as a student, it's actually a little bit of a relief that your book is out and about. I feel like we'll get more, even more of you. We get like all of you, <laughs> but now we'll get even more of you in classes, which I'm excited about. Um, and uh, I think that the gift of the book for me is, um, again, a chance for people to experience the way you see people the way you see soul, which I think is tremendous. It's, it's a huge, huge gift. Um, if anyone listening has any wounding of not feeling seen, heard, understood in their lives, this book is definitely going to hit, hit the mark for them. So I'm excited um, for that. I would love to know if you have any parting words per se for our listeners, if there's anything you're wrestling with on the transcendental highway <laughs> of the soul right now or at this moment that you want to speak to um anything you want to say really yeah these are transformative times volatile times the the world is in chaos um the old ways are dying uh new ways are struggling to be born um, and it's a hard birth. Um, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of illusion. Um, the forces behind the scenes right now in the world are, uh, are vying for control over our future, over our love, over our freedom. And whoever you are, wherever you live, whatever sign of the zodiac you are, your soul agreed to be here at this crossroads of the ages where everything depends on releasing the immense love that's trapped in our species like a caged dragon. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Mark. How can people find out more about you, your book? And I'm going to include the links, but um, as well as your three-year chart study program, which I recommend anyone and everyone. <laughs> Thank you. You can go to markborax.com, M-A-R-K-B-O-R-A-X, markborax.com. You can find out about the College of Visionaries and Wizards. You can find out about my classes, my books, my free monthly newsletter you can sign up for by email. Uh, the Ruby Heart of the Dragon.com is a direct link to the book. If you're interested in finding out about the the different versions of the book, the audible book and the the ebook and the print book, and um, those are really the best ways to keep track with me, find out what I'm doing. If you sign up for the uh, monthly newsletter, the Cosmic Weather Report, um, you'll find out if my travels might lead me to your area and what I'm doing in terms of classes and how to find out about the three-year program. Beautiful. And I'll include the links as well. Thank you so, so much, Mark. This was a delightful conversation. Thank you. You're so welcome, Dama. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to Conversations with Healers. If this episode spoke to you in any way, please leave a review or comment, like or love it, and share it with others in your life. 
This is a true soul love project from my heart to yours. I really appreciate your help in spreading the word. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and check out other episodes to listen to some extraordinary healing stories and advice. Have a beautiful and wonderful day.